Welcome once again. We are, as always, with Greg Engert, beer director for the Neighborhood Restaurant Group, which includes such places as where we are this time out, Evening Star Cafe in the Del Rey neighborhood of Alexandria, also Tallulah, Columbia Firehouse. What's on tap this week? Well, so this week, um, this is beca- um, we're kind of returning to an old favorite, I guess, which is funny to say because it is pretty rare to find. Uh, this is Worldwide Stout from Dogfish Head Craft Brewery up in uh, Delaware. Uh, just an amazing, amazing beer, and I kind of felt compelled to include um, this beer in part because, as we mentioned last week, Sam Calagione, the, uh, the, the owner of Dogfish Head, who's also an author and a TV personality, uh, just moved on. He bested me, so to speak, and moved on to the finals for the James Beard Award, and I'm psyched for that. So we're kind of toasting um, Sam right. and Garrett Oliver, to him. Yeah, yep. um, who both are going to be are the finalists for Outstanding Wine and Spirits Professional. So um, in celebration of that, we're going to do the uh, Worldwide Stout. In 1999, when this beer debuted, it was the strongest beer on the planet. Things have changed since then. There's been a kind of arms race among certain brewers. Brewdog is probably most well known for that. They had the tactical nuclear penguin, et cetera, et cetera, uh, pushing the limits. But this is a beer that's made occasionally um, throughout the year by Dogfish Head, along with 120-minute IPA that uh, reaches close to 20% alcohol, and it's called Worldwide Stout because it is a stout at its base. Now, what I think you'll find interesting is when you taste this, it's got a really amazing kind of port wine quality to it. Yeah. Uh, it's not just your typical like chocolate, you know, espresso flavors you'd expect from a stout. That's there, but it definitely has a beautiful kind of uh, ruby port, tawny port, kind of dark fruity quality to it um, from the fermentation. Is there a brewer more adventurous than Dogfish Head and Sam? I mean, there, if there is, I don't think there's so. not many. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I mean... I, no, I don't, I don't think so. And I think it's cool, too, because they've been adventurous before it was cool to be adventurous. I mean, he's been making, as they say, off-centered ales for off-centered people um, before there was a market for it. I mean, you know, Washington, D.C. was one of the first markets, if not the first, uh, outside of Delaware um, for his beers. And I remember, you know, back in those days, we were getting uh, 750s of 90-minute IPA coming down from the brewery. Uh, from the brew pub, actually. They didn't even have the brewery then uh, with, with uh, labels that had been rubber banded on and things like that. I mean, it was a really crazy, um, you know, DIY thing. And it was amazing, really handcrafted stuff. And, and things haven't changed. They've gotten uh, more notoriety. They're definitely making more beer. But they're still staying true to, what, you know, what they want to drink and with showcasing all the cool things that they can do with craft beer. And they make their own gin. They make their own vodka, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> which we'll probably have to... Well, we'll probably never have a vodka of the week Spirits thing, and I'd be week. pushing it a little bit too far. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's yeah. amazing. So I, I think that that's the that's one of the cool things. Like I said, this has been around since 1999, um, debuted in the winter then, and it's outstanding. Uh, if we talked a little bit about aging um, beers, this one is phenomenal for that. Um, you know, something that's really big and huge is going to soften with age. And I've had bottles from from 2000, 2001 that oh, you know nice. recently that are just outstanding. Um, very nice. But you see, and it's almost got more of like a kind of a, a milk chocolate quality to it. It's not as like dark chocolate, bitter um, notes, at least in the nose, the great dark fruit port qualities. Now, I have to be honest and admit, and, and I spend a fair amount of time in stores that sell beer, I, I haven't, I don't know that I've seen this, and you're saying it's been around since 99, so yeah. I think it's going to be, re- really be something new to many people. Yeah, it this. is pretty new, but I mean, you'll see it from time to time, even on draft. Um, I think it comes out, and you know it comes out in very small portions, but you'll see it. I mean, for instance, Planet Wine, which is our wine in and beer shop um, to go, uh, is located right next door to where we are right now, Evening Star Cafe. And I actually p- found this bottle over there, um, you know, before we before we did this. And, I, and I, it's amazing; they have a great supply. But I see it at Whole Foods um, in the district and in Virginia. Um, but you know, if you don't see it, you don't find it. It's probably just not available then. It will come out occasionally. And following um, all of these breweries we've been talking about online, looking at their websites and stuff, you'll get an idea of when um, you should expect or when you can go hunting for them. And uh, I think I'm going to have to stop next door <laughs> before I leave. It's, it's the only the right thing to do. You right. mentioned port wine, uh, and, I, I, and I taste that in here. So this would be great with cheese. Blue cheese is the uh, best. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it just the, the one of the things with this is, 
Um, blue cheese is funny. I've heard people say like, oh yeah, big imperial IPAs or big roasty imperial stouts are awesome with blue cheese. Well, they can be, but if they're too bitter, it's gonna overwhelm. Because blue cheese, even though really hugely flavored, it's got a creamy paste to it. So what I like here is this is not too roasty and dry. So it's gonna go nicely. You've got fruit qualities. You're bringing fruit into the blue cheese. You've got a nice sweetness up front to balance the salty tang of the blue cheese. It's, a, it's just unbelievable with it. Um, think of like, really, I, I love um, you know, Stilton, but obviously Roquefort, Gorgonzola, things like that are gonna be fantastic with it as well. Nightcap beer for sure. And if you wanted to, you could get um, pretty uh, adventurous with that. I mean, I could even see like, if you grilled some like lamb chops or something like that, it could be really awesome, especially because the char from the grill would go nicely with the slight roasted quality of the beer. And, and I think I saw, this is 9.5? Oh, no, 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 no. 19.5, <laughs> yeah. This is a big boy. Oh, uh, oh. This is uh, one wow. of those beers that, and actually it's a great thing that you brought that up because it is big. It, it, it is something that should be sampled and sipped, um, you know, and, and the funny thing about it is that Ale yeast will die in the presence of too much alcohol. So this is probably utilizing some kind of wine or champagne yeast um, additionally to the ale yeast in order to get that alcohol content up to where it is. Greg, thank you again as always. Appreciate it. And as always, please do drink responsibly and be sure to bring your thirst next time for another Beer of the Week.